Welcome, Eagles, to another episode of Trad Cat Night Radio. I'm Eric Ajewski, founder and owner of Trad Cat Night, the most viewed and followed traditional Catholic website in the world, ranked number one as it relates to traditional Catholicism by Alexa. Top 20,000 website now in the world, folks. I appreciate all your prayers and support over the past three years. It truly has been an honor and a blessing to serve you all. I want to ask you to continue to share these videos, continue to share my articles, which are now being featured on Veterans Today, by the way. So I encourage all those other alternative news outlets, which are now being labeled fake news or conspiratorial by the mainstream, to continue to pick up uh, what we are seeing here at Trad Cat Night. As you know, I try to bring on uh, the best possible guests for you, best possible programming coming to you Monday through Friday. And today is February 3rd, 2017. Make sure you subscribe to Tradcat Night right now. Click the notification button. Uh, well over 100,000 now on Tradcat Night following. I encourage you all who missed my recent talk on SGT Report, get to that. Uh, the video is very, very hot right now. A lot of good information in that. And lastly, folks, in this information war, please continue to support this apostolate uh, financially. Again, we go and grow as your charity flows, and I rely upon you all to continue to move this work forward now today's guest folks sit back and get ready for this one we're going to be getting back into planet x and earth changes and essentially these end times and i know david uh david mead and i uh share a lot of commonalities we may disagree on uh some points here or there but the overall consistent theme is is that planet x's uh arrival the system is more imminent now uh, but for those of you who do do not know who uh, david is let me just give you a brief background to him David uh, can feel free to add anything else to this, uh, but David studied astronomy amongst other subjects at the University of Illinois. After a graduation, he worked in forensic investigations for a number of years. The last 10 years, he has spent with Fortune 1000 companies writing special reports for management. He is a specialist in research and investigations. He has 10 books to his credit. That's right, 10 books, including his best seller, Planet X 2017. Uh, the Arrival, which I'll try to get in the description box, and I'm sure we'll probably uh, be getting more into that today. Uh, so in general, he enjoys uh, relating science and the Bible. And, of course, uh, he and I agree that, you know, Planet X is in Scripture. Uh, we see it in Exodus 20. I think we both can make that more indirect uh, connection there in uh, the Apocalypse. And then from our perspective, from a traditional Catholic perspective, it is in traditional Catholic prophecy, and I'll relay the most prominent uh, probably Catholic mystic the church has ever seen, and it's a relaying of Jesus Christ himself talking to this specific mystic, warning of this radiant planet coming from the outmost uh, reaches of the universe, if you will, that is basically coming to cause destruction uh, for those traditional Catholic viewers out there. So, David, uh, welcome aboard. Thanks for taking time out. And uh, what's the latest with you? I saw you did a, a piece there with George Norrie, so congratulations to you to get on that show. I've been uh contacting george trying to get on his show to to you know to offer what we have to say and i haven't heard back from him yet so kudos to you for getting on the show uh why don't you just tell us you know what you're getting into as of late and i know you wanted to start off this piece by giving us a little story as a backdrop to kind of lay down a foundation for this talk sure thanks for the intro the book has attracted attention around the world. The three largest British daily newspapers wrote reviews of it, even though they were slightly puffed. The uh, AOL News, Pravda, have picked up on it. It's becoming a mainstream science story. Now, I actually had a letter a couple of weeks ago from a fella that said, you know, I've read H.G. Wells' book, The Star, written in 1897. Actually, it's a short story. And he said it compares almost precisely to what is happening in real time right now here. And I looked at it, and it's amazing the similarities. But anyway, often an illustration can tell a major story. So one of my favorite movies of all time is The Shawshank Redemption. Yeah. And here's, you've heard of it, you've seen it then. Yeah. Uh, here's the plot in a nutshell. In 1946, a banker named Andy Dufresne, played by Tim Robbins, is convicted of a double murder, even though he's innocent. He's sentenced to a life term at Shawshank State Prison in Maine, where another lifer, I think his name is Red Redding, 
he's played by Morgan Freed, Freeman. And the, the realities of prison life, you know, become quickly aware to Andy, not the least of which is a corrupt warden. So he uses his banking skills to win favor with the warden, keeping the books on all of his illegal activities. And then, at an opportune time, Andy takes the evidence of the warden's bribery and corruption schemes with him late one night and escapes. He delivers the information to a local newspaper, which prints it. He eventually escapes to Mexico. But my favorite part is where you see the state troopers and the police with the sirens blasting come into the prison to arrest the warden. He looks out the window and sees them coming. And then the camera does a close up on a picture he has hanging in his office with the simple words, his judgment cometh and that right soon. Mm. So he stares at the picture while they're outside attempting to break into his office. That's where we are today. The uh, Planet X system is fast approaching, and with it comes cataclysmic natural disasters on a never-before-seen scale. And I analyzed the date-coded matrixes in the Book of Revelation in my book, Planet X, the 2017 arrival, and thousands of people have purchased it online at Barnes & Noble and Amazon. So the word is getting out. Yeah, I appreciate that. And uh, just along the same lines, you know, the entertainment industry certainly puts uh, Planet X, if you will, right in our face without, uh, I, I guess, even mentioning Planet X. I remember seeing a, a recent Army commercial where there's this kind of red uh, dot in the sky, red huge dot in the sky that's kind of hovering above spaceships or whatever, or, or the um, Air Force carriers or whatever they're called. And uh, towards the end of the, the video, you, you start scratching your head. You know, are they talking about uh, Planet X, which most researchers indicate would be, you know, a gigantic, uh, it would be seen as red, a gigantic uh, red space body. And then, of course, we have these other uh, videos such as Deep Impact, which uh, Morgan Freeman was in. And I think they talked about uh, Elenin, right? Uh, extension, extinction, a level uh, event, I think was the name of that comet. And so we can probably transition into that now because I know, I, I believe you've been talking about a potential impact coming here in October 2017. The other movie I wanted to throw in there, too, is the movie 2012, which was very uh, apocalyptic. And in my, in my opinion, outside of the flooding aspect, because I don't I, I mean, the flooding is going to be bad. But the, the most important thing to pay attention to is the fire coming from uh, the heavens. Revelation 8, 7 ties in with some other uh, Catholic prophecy. But wh what are we seeing uh, along that front with? Uh, maybe you could follow up with predictive programming, entertainment industry. I don't know if I missed any other uh, movie that you've seen. But then also, uh, what, what's going to happen here in October 2017, in your opinion? Right. Well, you have some very strange statements talking about the media from people such as even Queen Elizabeth, who commented to her major domo, who's the head of her entire household staff as he retired. He said there are, she said there are some major evil sinister forces here in England that no one knows of. So th there are major secrets. Uh, there are s secret uh, groups and societies and so forth. Some of them know about Planet X. Uh, I don't even know if they always tell certain political people about it or not. They may keep it compartmentalized to a certain extent. I think, though, the current man in charge, Donald Trump, I noticed during his inauguration speech, it contained the strange words, we stand at the birth of a new millennium, ready to unlock the mysteries of space. So I believe this is a veiled reference to Nibiru. And Donald Trump said what he could. Uh, I think Trump knows. He signaled us with that statement, saying just enough. For those that were listening yeah and then also i'd follow up on that it was obama in the last month or last few weeks who issued that executive order and it was uh, relating to space weather specifically and how basically if you know certain cataclysms were to happen the government would take over this and take over that so yeah i think uh, you can start piecing together uh pieces of the puzzle here and it becomes glaringly obvious that 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 something approaches us events are approaching us and it's, you know, it's something that's there, but it's not just directly being talked about, I guess. Uh, maybe we can get into some of the disinformation later. 
that you and I probably agree on with Planet Nine and all that. But I, I did also want to just throw in there, uh, you know, today I tried to keep track of the birth pangs with earthquakes and that. And since the last time Dave and I talked, there has been an uptick on the number of 8.0 earthquakes or 7.50 and above. Uh, but they're coming with swarms, you know, so you'll get a massive quake like that. And then you're getting dozens and dozens of, of aftershocks, 5.0 and above. Today was relatively quiet. We had uh, Italy, Argentina, and Japan being hit over 5.0. Uh, Italy certainly has been interesting the past few months. Uh, maybe you could talk a little bit more about that, the earthquake aspect to this birth pangs, and then uh, we can kind of uh, move along maybe into Planet X deception and disinformation. Sure. Let's see. The uh, I would like to mention this because this isn't well known, but... Have you heard of the Chilean astronomers who have verified Planet X? Uh, I've seen it briefly. Didn't they do? Well, I think you just published it. It was a few days ago. It was a PDF, wasn't it? I didn't get a chance to get through all of it, but I'm pretty sure I saw it on planetxnews.com, uh, a PDF that came out uh, with a report. I posted it. Thank you for I didn't know you, if you'd seen it or not. But uh, this was about a year ago, a year and a few months ago. They're at the largest observatory in northern Chile, and it contains the largest single telescope in the world. It's 15,000 feet up. And this PDF document that I posted in one of the articles that I wrote for planetxnews.com, an online magazine, describes their conclusions. They say, and this was a year and some months ago, that the Planet X object is located at least 12 AU, astronomical units from the Earth. And they say it's about 880 kilometers in diameter and is being pulled into our sun's orbit due to its huge gravitational mass. And um, so this is one of the few publicly available reports that uh, you know has a multinational reach, it has the authority of professional astronomers, and um, so all I can say is that ALMA, the observatory where they used to uh, observe it and report on it, it's a partnership of the uh, European Space Organization, uh, Japan, Canada, Taiwan, South Korea, in cooperation with the Republic of Chile. So it's a major, major organization. And uh, I'm amazed that that information came out. Yeah. And, you know, they're, they're saying, would anybody that like to peer review this? So far, I don't think anybody has. But it has a much higher level, you know, of credibility than anything that comes out in a European newspaper. This is from the uh, scientists themselves. Yeah, that's, that's very interesting. And I'm surprised myself that that information has uh, got out there. I would just remind everyone, you know, the Vatican's got an observatory uh, out there in Italy. There's one in Mount Graham. I mean, there's there's other ones besides the ones I'm going to mention. But then there's also another one out in Australia, which many people miss, Project Wormwood, it's called. And they have an official uh, website there. You can simply type in Project uh, Wormwood, and you'll see the official page. And on it, they actually give scripture. They give the scripture of Wormwood. So obviously, they're paying attention to the skies, folks. And uh, when Father Malachi Martin, when he was trying to relay the third secret of Fatima going on uh, shows such as Coast to Coast with uh, Art Bell, uh, you know, he said basically that if he were to just mention it kind of directly and connecting it with the third secret of Fatima, he felt that he would die. And there's uh, certain instances where I think we could argue that maybe some of these researchers have died uh, in kind of bringing some information to uh, the forefront. Harrington uh, being one of them. I don't know if, if, if you disagree with that or not, David, but... Uh, you can follow up on that, but what about uh, the deception and disinformation of our time? I see an awful lot that the mainstream media is talking about a rogue planet out there, you know, sucking up all these other planets, Planet Nine, you know, but they're saying that it's like way out past the furthest uh, planet out there, which doesn't make sense, at least to me. Now, is this the mainstream media's way of buying more time to kind of uh, decrease potential panic, if you will? Yeah, I'm certain it is. It's not the real planet X. And the scientists know that our solar system is surrounded by the Oort cloud, which is 50 to 200,000 AU from our sun. And it, let's say if our sun were part, which it is, of a binary system, uh, this interaction would disturb the Oort cloud on a periodic basis. It would send comets toward us. So, you know, 65 million years ago, the, the, uh, the 
comet that hit the basin near Mexico uh, that basically eliminated all the dinosaurs. Uh, you look at the Tunguska event in Russia, 1908. That had about 1,000 times the power of the atomic bomb, flattened 80 million trees, 800 square miles. So anyway, science admits that there's a recently discovered dwarf planet named Sedna, and it has a very unusual elliptical orbit around the sun. It has an orbit of over 76 AU, where one AU is the distance from Earth to the sun. And Sedna's discoverer, his name is Mike Brown of Caltech, he said Sedna's location doesn't make any sense. He said it should be there. There's no way to put Sedna where it is. It never comes close enough to be affected by the sun, but it never goes far enough away to be affected by other stars. So since Pluto's been demoted in the last decade, it's no longer a planet, he's calling this nemesis or the ninth planet, saying it's about 10 times the mass of the Earth. So anyway, when they disclosed this about a year ago, the uh, NASA people, I would say that's a combination of true information and false disinformation. So I would just say don't major on minors. It, it's a type of propaganda. And the real planet X is in the vicinity of Mars and fast approaching Earth. It has no relationship to this recent discovery. So I think they're just making mistakes as they go. And that's what's happened. Yeah, I think they can't hide it anymore, and uh, essentially they got to come up with another narrative, if you will, uh, to kind of make sure that everyone is uh, not panicking and, and, and running around like chickens without a head. Now, another interesting sign or trend, if you will, that kind of should have everyone scratching their heads or the red flag should start going up is kind of, we're seeing a lot of celebrities and wealthy people start getting into prepping, <laughs> and you're seeing a lot of them buying up even underground spaces, uh, if you will, underground uh, bunkers. We've got these dumbs, deep underground uh, military bases. I wanted to ask you to maybe talk about that a little bit. I see that's on your website, so you, you mentioned that. You go into that. Uh, but again, it's kind of alarming when you're, when you're seeing the wealthy uh, now talking about, hey, you know, I, you know, I'm a prepper. Uh, you know, I'm preparing to, to move underground if necessary. I know here in the United States, I think most of these, these uh, underground shelters, if you will, or however you want to label it, are more out west. Uh, but maybe you could talk a little bit more about this area and what you're seeing uh, since the last time we talked. Right. They don't put them near the East Coast or near California. As you say, most are in Colorado out west. And, you know, let's say in Hollywood, James Cameron, who uh, directed the Titanic and so forth, he moved out of the United States, I believe, to New Zealand, if I'm not mistaken, some time ago. So he was probably one of the first to give us a signal that those people know what's happening. Now, everybody knows about three or four major deep underground military bases. And that would be, let's see, Site R, which is the alternate Pentagon site. And then you have Mount Weather, which is run by FEMA. It's outside of Washington. And then, of course, you have uh, Space Command NORAD in Colorado. And, you know, you could take tours, and I don't know if they canceled them recently, but after they built Greenbrier in West Virginia, which was associated with the big uh, resort, that was designed to house all of Congress and the White House and so forth. And it was classified between the 60s and the 90s. And some journalists found out about it, reported on it in the 90s, and then they declassified it. And then they held tourists for a while. And it can contain about a thousand people as its own uh, medical surgery suites, and uh, you know, can house people for six months or a year following a, a nuclear disaster or a space disaster or whatever. So there's about four deep underground military bases most people know of that are common knowledge, open source intelligence. Then, you know, if you're a, a follower of Phil Schneider or one of these people, you know, you can really go down the rabbit hole I don't have any direct contacts with people that have seen deep underground military bases. But of course, Phil Schneider has quite a story to tell. Now he's deceased, he's no longer with us, but his YouTube's uh, videos survive on YouTube. And he claims to have been involved in a major one in New Mexico. And he also said, he, I believe he said he was involved in Area 51 
and I believe he said he had some contact with alien technology, and I, I, I know he had some uh, unusual physical attributes, which he attributed to his run-in with these uh, entities. Very strange story. I, I don't know if it's uh, credible or not, but it's very interesting to read. They ought to make a movie out of it. Yeah, and I wanted to get a follow-up on this, too, because I'm, I'm glad to see that you did an article, a piece for PlanetXNews.com in relation to uh, survival medicine, even. And uh, I'll, I'll try to follow up a little bit after you speak, but there's a, a well-known mystic, the, the same very mystic that talked about uh, Planet X's arrival, this revelation from Jesus himself, uh, talked about all these herbs that will be necessary going through uh, the tribulation. Why don't you, from your perspective, break down what are some of the basics, you know, the essentials that people should have on hand as we head closer and closer to more of these uh, serious events? Okay, I think in the article I mentioned a couple. I mentioned colloidal silver, which is amazing. It used to be prescribed widely back in the 30s and uh, prior to that, prior to the time of antibiotics. And it's known to restrain the activity of six or seven hundred pathogens and colloidal silver you can almost make it at home but you can buy it at your local health food store and you can read articles about it study how to use it but if you take a couple of tablespoons a day if you're fighting certain types of let's say infections and it's, uh, it's the, the reviews on it are amazing I've known people that have had certain specific physical problems and the doctors gave them one thing and instead, they said that there were terrible side effects. So guess what? They just went with colloidal silver, and it took care of their symptoms for that specific malady, which I cannot mention, but uh, went in, in virtually no time, and they stayed on a regimen of it. So it's something that people need to research on their own and, uh, and so forth. There's also, and this is widely known for people that own health food stores and so forth, uh, it's called black elderberry or sambucus, mm -hmm. and I can only tell you my personal experience with it. I was staying in a house one time where one individual had, and I think I think he came down with the swine flu is what it was called at that time. And anyway, I would, had been playing cards with him one night, and the next day, I know I started to develop symptoms. So I went to a local CVS pharmacy, and I bought some black elderberry, <clears throat> and I took it for uh, one or two days, major doses. And I also uh, gargled with Listerine. <clears throat> I don't know what did it, but within 24 hours, I was completely normal. And this person uh, who went to the doctor and got Tamiflu or whatever they prescribed, he was sick for weeks. So I didn't get it at all. In fact, uh, his, his mother one time said to me, he's, she said, you never get sick, do you? And I said, well, I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't try to explain it. <laughs> no, that's important. Yeah, I mean, I, we try to bring on the best uh, within the realm of health and organic foods. I mean, we cover that here on Track Cat Night Radio. Uh, the major thing that I would say, uh, again, coming from this mystic, this actually was revealed by the Blessed Virgin Mary to uh, this particular mystic, Mary Marie Julie. She talks about a grave illness, and again, we, this ties in with the Book of Revolution. Revelation. We know things are going to get really nasty on, on the front of illnesses and epidemics. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, that's a, an essential part of the real message of the third secret of Fatima, according to Father Malachi Martin. He talked about epidemics wiping out whole nations. Okay, I'm going to say that again: wiping out whole nations overnight. Uh, and so, uh, the mode of using hawthorn was given by the Blessed Virgin Mary. The, the, get this: there will be a grave it. Illness, which human science will not be able to alleviate. This illness will first attack the heart, then the spirit, and at the same time the tongue. It will be horrible, and I have to preface because this is really long. Um, she says, my children, here's the only remedy which can save you. You are familiar with the hawthorn, uh, which grows practically in all hedges. The leaves of the hawthorn, not the wood, can arrest the progress of this disease. So she was really specific, saying use the leaves and not the wood. And, I mean, again, with the way things are going in the world, we're seeing all kinds of diseases uh, popping up. Just kind of an interesting little tidbit for you all uh, out there. Now, if we can get back, backtrack here a little bit. What, you know, we've got this total solar eclipse coming in, what, August. Then we've got the Revelation 12 uh, sign in the heavens in September 23rd. 
Now, are, are we still expecting, according to your timeline, something to happen uh, in October 2017? Could we be talking about a comet or asteroid, you know, striking uh, the planet? Right. To my best knowledge, and uh, again, I decode plain text in Revelation 6, you know, the apocalypse, and Revelation 12, verses 1 to 5, which in 12, 1 and 2 talks about uh, the constellation Virgo, the Virgin, and it talks about the Jupiter king planet and the gestation period of 42 weeks. It's a once in a 7,000 year event. It's never occurred, will never occur. And so it's so unusual. And I think when John was writing the apocalypse on the Isle of Patmos, he was somehow transported in time to the earth today, this year. And that's what he saw literally up in the skies. And then you go down to, uh, you know, the latter part of Revelation 12, 1 to 5, and you hear about the red dragon. I am positive that is an absolute reference to Planet X Nibiru system. And uh, so these are not really secret codes in the Bible, but I would say these were hidden in plain sight. This is not the Torah codes I'm talking about. But on that topic, I know Rabbi Glazerson in Israel, who's, who's written 30 books and he's a mathematician and brilliant and all that, he has studied the Nibiru system in terms of the Torah codes, the first five books of the Bible, and he has found reference to it in the Hebrew year 5777, which of course began last October and ends in October of 2017. So he has a Bible codes matrix with Nibiru appearing by October of this year. Yeah, interesting. I believe uh, Mother Shipton, she wasn't Catholic, and neither was, uh, well, Mother Shipton and Nostradamus, I think, used the same uh, terminology in their writings in terms of uh, a red dragon. So that's that's kind of interesting. But, yeah, I, I think uh, something is on the horizon. I do believe that we will be hit by a comet. There's some who know that the New World Order agenda is to unite humanity, and I know on from their perspective they've got kind of a, a phony comet or asteroid event coming in via use of Project Blue Beam. So it's kind of interesting. But it is in Scripture, folks. It is in, uh, you know, Catholic prophecy. I wanted to follow up on that. St. Hildegard talked about this comet hitting uh, in, during the end times. Again, this is all approved. She's a saint in the Catholic Church. She says, Before the comet comes, many nations, the good accepted, will be scored with want and famine. That great nation who, in my opinion, that interpretation is America. Some argue Britain. Uh, maybe it's both. Uh, in the ocean that is inhabited by the people of different tribes and descent by an earthquake, storm, and tidal waves will be devastated. It will be divided and in great part submerged. That nation will also have many misfortunes at seas. The, comets by, the comet by its tremendous pressure will force out of the ocean and flood many uh, countries, causing uh, much want and plagues. After the great comet, the great nation will be devastated, as I mentioned. And what's kind of interesting about that, I guess, David, is that I've had John Moore on the show, who I know you're familiar with, and he saw these blueprints while he was working inside the military, and it perfectly lines up with what St. Hildegard said. We have that uh, division in the middle of the uh, United States, the, the new Madrid uh, line, and then, of course, the West Coast and East Coast are just, just underwater. So uh, kind of interesting. If you want to follow up on that, uh, please do so. But I wanted to follow up with a comment that you just made on a mathematician because you have posted on your website university of arkansas researcher who i believe is a mathematician david whitmire also has come out on on the university's own page talking about planet x maybe we could talk a little bit about that because again more and more people are talking about this right he's a mainland you know astronomy professor and uh you know he's never been to the south pole telescope or anything like that but He's done his own mathematical computations, and he knows there's something. I would imagine if you studied his reports, they're very similar to the Chilean astronomers. Mm. And so these are coming out. You know, now, talking about strange events, there was the case of Rodney Marks, who was a uh, South Pole astronomer, I think back in 2000 or 2001. And he mysteriously passed away down there supposedly it was methanol poisoning, which uh, is like wood alcohol. And, you know, they could diagnose it, I think they said, because they lacked a D of a ready batty on a certain instrument. 
And so they just sent him back, and he went into a coma, and he was gone. And he, they left his body down there for four or five months because it was during the worst part of the year, winter-wise. And when they finally got him back to New Zealand, I believe, they, uh, I don't even know, they had all kinds of problems getting autopsy results. And it's still a mystery to this day what happened to him. So it, there, there have been some very strange events by uh, astronomers who were at these observatories who might have released information. Whereas on the other hand, you have civilian astronomers associated with these universities. They're relatively safe because they're not giving away secrets. But uh, there is mysterious activity out there. And professional astronomers are investigating this. Actually, this has been a mainstream science topic since about 1900. You know, Bob Tombo and others have, have searched for the, the, what they call back then, the ninth planet or planet X, which is technically a reference to the 10th planet. But anyway, this has been going on for about 100 years. NASA finally discovered it in 1983, and there were articles in the New York Times, the Washington Post, for a few weeks, and then they suddenly went silent. And they've been silent ever since. So there's just such a preponderance of uh, evidence. I think if an attorney took this to court, he could prove it you know, beyond a reasonable doubt. Yeah, no question. And just as a follow-up to what we were talking about, scripture reference to uh, the comet asteroid, we're talking Apocalypse 8, 8 through 11, for those who are scrambling or now trying to find that. Uh, so eventually, yes, as I mentioned, it's in scripture, it's in uh, Catholic prophecy, and I'm sure it's in a whole bunch of other cultures who have, uh, have you know, quote-unquote prophecies as well. Um, what's your take uh, since the last time we talked, I mean, there's been obviously a lot of earth changes. I mean, I've been paying attention to even these sinkholes, which are happening in very strange areas. My home state of New Jersey, a massive one down in Texas. I just saw another massive one in Detroit, which is uh, you know, a little unusual. I mean, it's obviously not uh, right on a coastline or anything. Uh, is there anything that stands out to you over the last three or four months? Maybe mass animal die-offs. Uh, you know, that seems to be pretty prevalent the last uh, few weeks. But there's an awful talk, uh, an awful lot of talk about this uh, magnetic reversal or pole shift uh, that we are seemingly going through. And I see it more and more on your mainstream news on a nightly basis. Right. I would say, well, let's look at the last quarter, the last three months of 2016. You've had a couple of major asteroids strike Spain and Australia in, in uh, January. There, you know, uh, an asteroid passed between the moon and the earth and NASA gave it maybe two hours notice didn't say anything about the others until they went through the atmosphere they have a website they list about 1800 asteroids that in the next uh, 20 years or so will all fly near the earth but will all miss the earth but the ones that actually hit the earth like the one in Russia February of 2013 which uh, injured 1,100 people, damaged 1,500 buildings. They nobody know about that. Nobody until it actually uh, hit Russia. So, but in terms of overall astrophysics and uh, solar research, in the last few years, something very, very strange is going on. And I'll just give you a few bullet point highlights. Okay. So, let's see. You've got uh, recent solar. Uh, magnetic field is decreased in size. The long-term increase in solar irradiance is heating the Earth and Mars. We have a 300% increase in galactic dust entering the system. Mercury's magnetosphere is experiencing significant increases. Venus, the uh, green globe increased 25 times. Uh, Mars has showed a rapid occurrence of clouds in blue zone. And I think uh, Jupiter's moon Europa is much brighter than scientists expected. Uh, its moon Ganymede is 200% brighter. Uh, you can see the aurora in Saturn's polar regions for the first time in recent years. And Uranus was featureless in 1996, been exhibiting huge storms since about 2000. And Pluto's observations reveal a 300% increase in atmospheric pressure. So something is, you know, causing this. Yeah, no doubt about that. I'm glad you're throwing some statistics out there because I know a lot of people want to see statistics uh, to prove the existence of Planet X. There's a lot of scoffers 
uh, still out there, and we'll get to that in a second. But yeah, I, I've covered two. There's there's a double in occurrences of uh, earthquakes over 5.0. I think it was reported in New Zealand something like it's doubled in the past few years of earthquakes that have gone over 5.0. Uh, meteor sightings uh, again. I, I, I believe it was a couple of months ago within a three-day period there was something like hundreds and hundreds reported throughout the Midwest uh, United States which is pretty interesting because I know over the past few years David I've seen quite a few myself when I go out for uh, a walk late at night I mean I've seen some pretty significant uh, what people would identify as a shooting star uh, but some significance there now how do you respond uh, to the scoffers and you can be more general if we're talking end times where we can talk uh, Planet X because I still even though more and more people are coming around to the reality that this thing is real you're still going to get your you know your occasional troll who just you know wants to bury their head in the, the sand like an ostrich what do, you, what do you say to these people well I think one of the strangest things is after 1983 after NASA discovered it using the RS satellite they were pretty quiet about Planet X they certainly don't want anyone to prepare for its passage but they were the first to announce the discovery of it back in the 80s. And I can just read a sentence or two from the June 19, 1982 edition of the New York Times. Something out there beyond the furthest reaches of the known solar system is tugging at Uranus and Neptune. A gravitational force keeps perturbing the two giant planets, causing irregularities. And this force suggests a presence far away and unseen, a large object, the long sought Planet X. So, the announcement was a slip, I suppose, because within a week they retracted it, and they've been silent ever since. And, you know, I'm sure you know maybe James McCanny. He dealt closely with NASA during his career, and he had access to their data when he was at Cornell. And he explains why this is. He claims it's because NASA is under congressional order not to tell anybody if they discover a doomsday scenario. And that same edict restrains public officials from telling the public of an impending disaster and causing a panic since so many people live near the coast. It has to go out through some official channel if it goes out at all. Now, back in 1991, Robert Harrington, who was head of the Naval Observatory in Washington, D.C., uh, wrote an abstract. He had about a decade of theoretical and observational astronomy with a team of experts. And... He actually took all that data along with what's called a uh, eight inch aperture high precision camera an astrograph to New Zealand. Uh, he thought about going to Patagonia, but he chose New Zealand. And, you know, he, that, that's when his end arrived. He came down with esophageal cancer, which should have taken six to 12 months or something. And in six days, he was gone before he could make any public announcements. So that's kind of strange, too. Yeah, and a follow-up what we were talking about in terms of uh, asteroids and, uh, and comets, I encourage you all, uh, outside of PlanetXNews.com, uh, there's SOT.net and StrangeSounds.org, which does a pretty good job on a daily basis documenting all of the uh, you know, meteor sightings, uh, all of the latest Earth changes that are available. So I encourage you all to uh, get to those websites, a little plug for them. But then also, yeah, but just in the past uh, 72 hours or so, Asteroid 2017 BS-32 will zoom past the Earth. This was on Thursday in the fourth close shave of the year. So, uh, again, this is just this past Thursday, we've had another uh, large asteroid that seemingly came out of nowhere that scientists kind of pick up late. And I can only suppose perhaps they're just hiding behind the sun and they're just showing up rather late and they're not able to pick it up, kind of like that one that hit in uh, Russia uh, just some years ago. Let's get into your book a little bit more. Why don't you talk to us a little bit more about your book? Well, first of all, where you can get it. Uh, give us uh, you know, a synopsis. Maybe offer to us some of the things that you learned while you were writing this book, because I'm sure an awful lot of research uh, went into this book. And I, I can only speak for myself. As I go along and I pick up more information, sometimes my timeline's a little tweaked. Uh, and I, I'm just curious, uh, has anything changed since you've written the book that you're like, okay, well, maybe I was wrong in that area, and I've kind of changed course? No, actually, if anything, I've had confirmation that everything in the book is accurate, and I always call my book an intelligence briefing. I say it'll prepare you spiritually and physically for what is now imminent, like in the later part of 2017. 
If you've ever seen a coded document, it's the book of Revelation. My book's purpose is to decode it and bring absolute clarity. And, uh, of course, you always have the scoffers. You know, Peter back in the epistles said they would always exist. Mostly they're willfully ignorant people, and, and they almost pride themselves on being ignorant. So that's a small percentage, hopefully, of the population. Uh, but, you know, uh, even if you look back to major events in history, th these, like World War II, that was won by the intelligence agencies, uh, British MI5 and MI6. So you, you need an intelligence briefing, and that's what the book is. It's available as an e-book, a print book, and an audio book. It's on Amazon.com online. BarnesandNoble.com online. 55% of all books are now online. It's available in about 10 English-speaking countries. The best way to find it is to go to one of those book sites and just type in Planet X, the 2017 arrival by David Mead, and uh, you'll go right to the book. Or you can just Google or Bing search Planet X, the 2017 arrival by David Mead. And you'll probably go to one of my YouTube videos or my website, or you'll be referenced to one of the online book sites. On most, if you enter all that information, you, most of the page one results on the major search engines will reference you to my book. And if you go to AOL News or Google News or anything, you'll you see about half of the results, which are the, some of the major international newspapers, the Plymouth Herald, the British tabloids, AOL News, Pravda, the Washington Post, they've all written uh, stories about my book and mentioned my name and the book's name. So uh, it's pretty easy to find, and I would suggest uh, taking a look. Appreciate it. Uh, now, in terms of the sun, what, what significant is the, the significance is the sun going to play as Planet X uh, is getting closer? We, of course, know from Scripture that God said he wouldn't uh, destroy the world by, by water, but by, by fire, essentially, will be bring about this purification and, and kind of uh, getting rid of the evil, if you will. And, of course, there'll be a, a, a literal transformation of the world. I mean, maybe describe to us what, what you think is going to play out as it gets closer. I mean, are we talking, uh, you know, mag magnetosphere going down, large-scale CME coming down and burning a third of the Earth? Is this why they're building these underground bases, kind of like that movie, The Knowing? How, how do you see this kind of playing out? Right. So if you look at history and, and everything repeats itself, back in 1859, early September, the Earth's inhabitants had the greatest solar storm in recorded history, the Carrington event. And this storm short-circuited telegraph wires, massive fires, and the light show, the Aurora Borealis, you can see it in Cuba, Bahamas, Hawaii, spark discharges set telegraph paper on fire and the electrical grid at that time was in its infancy so that event was frightening but it had no major impact however when planet x arrives later th this year it will create an event that occurs on the surface of the sun that releases a large amount a tremendous amount of energy in the form of a solar flare or coronal mass injection this is a very hot electrified gas that has a mass that exceeds that of Mount Everest. And this time, events will be different. So this will bring down the electrical grid, and the shelves on grocery stores will be cleaned out in one or two days. Banks and ATMs don't work without electric current. Gas pumps don't work without current. Food transportation will grind to a halt, and you'll have rioting and looting. You'll have communication satellites down, the 9-11 function on the phone will not work. So for as long as it lasts, until new transformers are built or imported, society will be in a measure of chaos. And I call this the calling card of Planet X upon its near approach to the Earth and Sun. Wow. Yeah, pretty, I mean, I'm right there with you. Uh, and I, I know with Planet X researchers, in terms of timelines, we, we may be a little bit different in terms of, of when certain things happen, but there's a lot of commonality. I, I want to ask this final question before... I get your closing comments, kind of summary, and then provide you with uh, some what I call shameless self-promotion time. Well, you know, there's going to be people who ask, uh, now that we have Trump in office, I mean, do you think he's going to alert us when the worst of the worst is, is about to occur? Like, if they have information, okay, this specific event will happen, will they actually tell us, or are they just going to 
leave us out to dry. Well, I think what's going to happen, you're right, at some point it's going to become so obvious, either because of natural cataclysms or solar cataclysms or some other reason. You're going to have some man that probably looks like uh, Colombo in a raincoat come out of the Wormwood Project in Australia and say, oops, by the way, you know, we just found something and I just have to release this information to the government and to the world. And it's, it's going to be self-evident at that point. Um, and, and I think Donald Trump will, will, will not hide or disclose anything at that time. And um, I, I think, you know, uh, if you look at Trump's website, he has a page called Positions. And he has some very brilliant positions on a lot of topics. And um, I don't know. I, I don't think he has any hidden motives. Uh, I, I believe he wants to restore a great republic, and uh, I'm pretty glad he's in charge when this is about to occur. Now, as a follow-up to what we were talking about with fire falling down from heaven, of course, we're talking Revelation 8-7, but there's an approved uh, Catholic um, uh, revelation in the church, 1973, from Akita, Japan. Now, this specific sister who received this uh, revelation is under wraps by the Vatican, and I had on a uh, notable Catholic writer, Dave Dionisi, who went to visit her out in Japan and met her privately, and she said to him to promote it and be like basically be aggressive because she felt it was very close, and it relates to what we were talking about with the son, in my opinion. If men do not repent and better themselves, the Father will inflict a terrible punishment on all humanity. It will be a punishment greater than a deluge, such as one has never seen before. Fire will fall from the sky and wipe out a great part of humanity, the good as well as the bad sparing, neither priest nor faithful. Get this. The survivors will find themselves so desolate they will envy the dead. Now, folks, listen, I appreciate you all tuning in today. I'm going to allow David now. Uh, a kind of closing uh, summary, if you will, last comments, anything he'd like to discuss before I kind of uh, kind of wrap this up with the three days of darkness, some of the proximate signs uh, that relates to, uh, from a Catholic po prof prophecy perspective, some things that we're already seeing now to indicate just how close we are to uh, this particular event. Very good. I appreciate the time. And I'd like to say for the benefit of those listening, that uh, I deal in open source intelligence. Uh, I'm not WikiLeaks. I don't deal in encrypted data from private sources, but I do do deep levels of research. I've done thousands of hours of research in scientific journals and other reference material. And uh, so I, it's great. It's of very great importance for the alternative media to disclose this information because the mainstream media generally will not touch on it and even some of the more prominent players in alternative media will not touch it. I don't know why, but uh, we're statistically significant enough that we can make a difference. And it, a lot of people will say, well, there's nothing you can do, but that's not right. What you can do is you can get a three-month food supply. You can buy one or two books to let you know approximately when it's going to happen or when the events will be right about to occur, and that will give you uh, an intelligence briefing that educates you and prepares you for what is coming physically and spiritually. So you need to buy a book now, and my book is Planet X, The 2017 Arrival by David Mead. Just Google it, and you'll find it on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, uh, Kobo uh, in Canada and England and Australia as well. And it's excellent reference material. It's a page turner, and it's based on a cataclysmic amount of scientific evidence, as well as scripture that backs that up. And it's time to get ready. Now, what about your website and email? Good. I'll be glad to give those. My email is David Bead, M E A D E, 7777 at gmail.com. My webpage is www.writers-web-services.com. And I made it a very generic name because I wasn't sure initially what I was going to do with it, but 
a few years ago, I devoted the entire site to the Planet X book. Well, I appreciate it, uh, David. Is there any uh, other like specific articles you're working on, projects, certain subtopics within the realm of Planet X that you're going to dive into uh, in 2017? Or um, I, I, I was just curious because I know within the, the world of Planet X, I mean, there's just so many different rabbit holes you can go down. I was just curious if there was a certain subtopic that you're kind of focused in or locked in on right now. Right. Well, I kind of flow with the spirit, and I come up with new ideas every week. I write two articles a week for planetxnews.com, and that can kind of keep the reader updated if they go to that site. Just just Google planet, no spaces, just planetxnews.com, and you'll see my articles usually on the front page, and you can check under writers, guest writers, David Mead, and you can access a several dozen, 30 or 40 articles, recent articles that I've written that update the book and give my ideas on a week-to-week -week, uh, current basis. Thank you, David. And as clo in closing, I just wanted to bring about uh, what I mentioned earlier, as I promised, that esteemed mystic, who in my opinion is, was one of the holiest souls to ever live uh, in the church, Marie-Julie Jehenny, she lived... Uh, in France, I mean, she had wonderful mystic, mystical gifts uh, recorded by medical science. She once performed a five-year fast living only on the Eucharist. Uh, she was a victim soul. I mean, just a very, very holy woman who forewarned of the infiltration of the Catholic Church and many other cataclysms to arrive uh, in Europe. She predicted names of popes, which came about, uh, you know, it came to pass. But she, she received this revelation from our Lord himself. And again, this is approved uh, in the Catholic Church. Uh, for those who are wondering who are Catholic, uh, it reads as this. This is Jesus talking. In eternal wisdom, I have my purpose to preserve for an immense number of Jews because on that day of my rejoices, I want to confound them. The ungodly eye of all those souls will remain open because I want them to see my power. I preserve it them to see with their own eyes this radiant planet I will have coming out of the remotest parts of exile under a frightening storm of fire and under the signs of my anger, the whole sky will be crossed with bolts similar to the ones my father thrusted upon the world when I offered myself up for the ransom uh, of my people. Again, that is approved by the church. And uh, it's kind of in close. I just wanted to give some of the more proxi proximate signs uh, from the consensus of Catholic prophecy as it relates to this three days of darkness. And it relates, of course, to this infiltration of the Catholic church, the flouting of uh, church laws, just the overall lack of charity towards neighbor, heartlessness, uh, divisions and contentions and revolutions and civil unrest, as Jesus warned about uh, in uh, Matthew 24. The breakdown of the family life, of course, we're seeing this, the sodomite agenda and transgenderism, a modest fa fashions, civil commotions, downfall of governments, uh, and then, of course, the earth changes, flouts, uh, floods and droughts, um, crop failures, unusual weather, earthquakes, tidal waves. I mean, we're, we're seeing all of that evidence, folks. I mean, people who are paying attention to it, like David and I, on a daily basis, see how it's trending for the worse, if you will. And so I encourage you all to pay attention to this. Uh, you know, our Lord said, watch and pray, something we do have to do. Folks, in summary, please do keep uh, David and I in prayer. Make sure you subscribe to Trad Cat Night. Click that notification button. I'll try to bring David on uh, every, you know, two to three months so we can get up updates because as plan the Planet X system is getting closer, it's going to get <laughs> worse and worse. And so I'm sure there are going to be massive, you know, 8.0 earthquakes to report upon and all uh, the other earth changes that we are seeing. My good friends, uh, as I mentioned, let's spread our wings in faith and hope. Now is not the time to succumb to doubt, worry, despair. Uh, truly, we know the times that we live in. Let's keep our eyes focused in on salvation. And until next time, stay safe and God bless.